Welcome back to Veil of Sound. Yes, our regular interview Sunday. And yes, I'm very happy to have another post-rock band here. And I'm also very happy to have one of, I think, the post-rock bands at the moment in the States. I know that there are a lot of them out there, but I like, I hear sirens a lot. So I'm very, very happy to have Wes, David, and Adrian here with me to talk about the new record and about a lot of other things. So Folks, thanks for joining the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Excited yeah. to be here. Yeah. So maybe for all the ignorant people out there who don't know who exactly you are, maybe shortly say who you are and what you do in the band. And of course, uh, ladies first. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes, obviously. <laughs> okay. obviously. <laughs> I'm Adrian and I play bass. I'm David. I play guitar. I'm Wes and I play guitar. So, and for all the others, there are two more members who are not available at the moment. So it's another David who plays the drums and Eric who plays the keyboards, right? Yes. So uh, first question here on the Veil of Sound is always, what is the band merch shirt, whatever you are wearing or that you want to pluck right now? Oh, well, I've got on a shirt from the great Balta from Finland. Uh, oh, yeah. we, we toured with them uh, in, 20, in Europe in 2022. Uh, obviously great band and like amazing people they were they were great to tour with and uh i think they i think they're working on a new record so we're excited for that yeah i've heard that too and I'm, we're also very excited about that uh while adrienne is still thinking about what she might pluck um wes what are you wearing got a furs in a row french band oh yes yeah they're, they're very different good. really great people yeah, but musically a little different from I Hear Sirens. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> and Adrian, any, anything that you would like to pluck here? Any any other stuff? Do you, well, what I've been wearing a lot of, and it just happened, was the post-festival um, here in the States, in yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah. Um, but I, I've worn my post-fest stuff a lot lately, so. Yeah, I... I've read, or I think a lot of people read about that outside of the U.S. Amazing lineup. So a big shout out to the free masterminds behind it, to Sean, Derek, and uh, and Nathan. So uh, for everybody asking, I think it's pretty obvious. Baroness here got this a few days ago at a concert here in my hometown, so I had to get that. Um, folks, so let's dive right into the new record, into Acheron. And I don't even know how the Americans pronounce it, you know. Um, we, we say Acheron, but... Acheron, okay. Yeah. And what struck me about the record is that it seems as if one of the major topics on it is like transitioning from one place to another or also from one, like... Um, <clears throat> how should I say, from one part of existence to the other. Is that just my imagination? Or are track titles like Acheron, Pale Rider, and also Watcher and Pray, because if you pray somebody, then you must follow him. So are these like, like things that matter to you, like transitioning from one spot to the other? I don't know necessarily. I think, I think when we originally started writing the record, we kind of wanted like a like a horror movie vibe you know what i mean and and so, so one of the earlier ones we were writing was uh the one we ended up titling watch or pray because it felt the first half of the song felt like you know someone being stalked and then the last the last heart part was that the more you know getting chased down the, the prey part i don't know i don't know there was really no i don't know i really wouldn't no, no, how to, how to say it. There well, was... I think it's kind of interesting because we did have kind of transition as a band as we were writing it. Too. That's true, yeah. And so I wonder if that was just sort of an underlying thought process as we were writing it. That's true. So when we when when we initially started writing it, we had uh, Trevor was our keyboard player. And uh, after Postfest, he quit to pursue his uh, career as a teacher. Uh, and so... Uh, bad choice yeah. i can save it as a teacher myself bad choice <laughs> <laughs> don't do it uh and then so then we got west to join on and then uh we, we were actually recorded the album uh with, after we recorded the album eric we rejoined the band eric was our keyboard player years ago and eh, there was a lot of transition yeah 
Yeah. Yeah, it's also like the transition. I, if I if I remember correctly, on Stella Mori, it was just basically the two of you, the two Davids, right? Yeah, and uh, and Trevor, our oh. our old player. Yeah, so there's three of us. Yeah, and then so I think I did I did the guitar and bass and and I think even I, we recorded with Wes. Uh, so and so he even came up with some of the bass lines on there as well. So yeah, yeah. to make it clear for everybody, Wes uh, is is part time part owner or owner of Archive Recordings in, in Salt Lake City, right? I'm the owner. I've had the studio about twenty years and. So I make records with a lot of bands, and I also go out and I do front of house touring with other bands as well. Um, nevertheless, there seems to be at least some kind of mm, liking for for antiquity, for ancient names, for ancient topics. I mean, like we have Acheron, who is one of the gods of Greek mythology. We had. Uh, Stella Mori as an as a term on your last record. We have in absentia, which I mean, of, of course, nowadays it's common terminology, but you know, of course, originally Latin. So who's who's the antiquity nerd in the band? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's kind of a combination of all of us because when we were when we were coming up with titles for songs, actually we had everything recorded before we had any titles. But yeah. uh, I think Acheron and in absentia and Atropos came from Adrian. Um, and then uh, Pale Rider was like a reference to uh, one of the uh, four the four horsemen yeah, of the apocalypse or whatever. And then previous album, uh, I think Stella Mori was me. I, I don't know. We, we all kind of, we all kind of have our own input. So it's all, it's all a little bit of us, but we, we really, we've always been into like Greek mythology and things of that nature. So. But very already strikes something that I also like to talk about. It's very common among post-rock bands, um, <clears throat> especially the instrumental post-rock bands, to uh, first of all record the stuff and then afterwards think of, okay, do we give them names? Is that also something that you always do that way or is it just for, for the new record? Um, I think for the most part, the names always came afterwards. So so we'd write the songs and, and they'd always have like, weird placeholder titles uh i don't even remember what we called half the songs on yeah. this one uh but yeah they don't they all have our yeah we call it, i think acheron the, the song acheron we called uh sparrows for the longest time and and uh so yeah i don't know for some reason we always just wait till the end to have a chance to record it listen to it get a real good feel for it before we kind of name it that is something that strikes me. So you record the thing and then does everybody throw in a name or is it just like, mm, maybe this, maybe that? Because I think that's a very interesting process, uh, which of I course think... comes from the, from the lack uh, or non-existence of vocals, of course. Sure. So I, yeah, what we typically do is we have like a shared uh, Google spreadsheet and then we'll just all put in kind of like ideas and we'll, We'll kind of decide yeah i think this makes sense for this and this makes sense mm -hmm. for that but we all kind of just throw in ideas and what, what we think fits the vibe of the record and and songs yeah. does that then take long or is it a rather quick process <laughs> it, it can <laughs> it can take a while uh, i guess and sometimes it's hard to decide like well maybe we call this one this and this one that or or vice versa but uh mm -hmm. it, it can be I guess I guess this time around we kind of like got down to the wire and like I guess we get better come up with names and so we did it kind of quick, I guess but it was all oh it was things in a week <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> um so you've already said it you know you as a band were a band in transition you know on, on Stella Mori it was just the two Davids and former keyboard player now you're five people did that also change the songwriting itself yeah, I mean yes and no. I, yeah. I think I think a lot of it, a lot of it stayed the same, but some of it was different. Uh, I think typically what we do is, or what we've done is, there's no real like, one person writes the song and then everyone kind of puts their parts, and it's usually kind of like a group effort where we're kind of screwing around, and someone's like, "Oh, that sounds cool, keep playing that," and and stuff kind of comes from that. Um, this time around, what was a little different is, a lot of the stuff, we kind of just. It's kind of like last minute 
like pre-production stuff we're like we don't know what we're doing and then even when we went into record some of some of the songs were just kind of like oh well let's put stuff down and see what happens so yeah we adjusted so, we went yeah you know so a very in the moment kind of thing yes yes is that something that all of you feel comfortable with? I mean, like five people, I I could imagine there was one like, oh, we, we got to get something done. Or is it something where you all say like, okay, we we can, we got, we got some time. Um, I, don't, I, I feel pretty comfortable with it. Is, is the guy that recorded the previous record. Mm -hmm. like, I had a pretty good idea of what the vibe of everything was. And I feel like just doing pre-production where you just kind of, recorded us jamming and coming with uh, song ideas and then kind of like forming songs around that was a pretty fun, easy way to do it quick. And yeah, yeah, yeah it's cool. So if these are, mm, let's say, spontaneous glimpses into the band, right? Um, will the songs remain the same when you perform them live or will there be bigger changes? Uh, I think I think they're the same for the most part we play we actually played a uh, like a private party uh last night and and we played five of the songs and, and they basically played them as they are on the record i think one difference is some of the older songs are changing a little bit mm -hmm. because we didn't have a second guitar so so those might sound different live but but uh any anything off the new record i think they'll pretty much sound the way we recorded them mm -hmm. i think yeah pretty close you know, but is that something that you think about when you record the stuff or when you write the stuff? Oh, how could we put this on stage? Or is it something where you say like, okay, we record and if we can perform it, then we perform it otherwise. I think that's kind of the thing or that, because we've done that before where on the previous record where some of the songs we've recorded, it's like, well, I don't know how we do this live. So I guess it's just on the album. So, but I think, I think most of the things we did on this new album, we could, figure out how to do live and mm -hmm. and we definitely had some conversations as we were recording like could we do this live but yeah i think we could like this is how we could do it and then yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> adrian you have been a member of i hear sirens before if i remember correctly how was it for you to rejoin the band oh it's been awesome it's been like it was funny i'm i uh, moved back to salt lake and um, I, they had another bass player and my husband said, oh no, you're gonna play with them again. I was like, no, no, they already have another <laughs> bass player. It's, you know, it's fine. I, I, I really loved the time I did play with them. And, mm -hmm. um, and then it just so happened their bass player uh, was moving and, and so they reached out to me and I, it was like no hesitation, of course. Like, yeah, I'm back in a hundred percent. Was that first move that you made a few years ago, moving away from Salt Lake, was that also the reason why you stopped being a member? Yeah, yeah. So I moved to Philadelphia, so it was just impossible. Mm -hmm. Like you know, a little far away. Away, yeah, yeah. So I kept playing music with the, um other people, but um, yeah. When I moved back, I thought, well, that's probably it. Like I, I probably won't play with them again. And so it was just, it felt like. His met. Sounds definitely sounds like it. Yes, definitely sounds yeah. like it. Um, what is also very interesting, you have a few tracks on the record that have like vibes which are very, very melancholy. For example, the beginning of uh, O11. Um, whereas on other tracks, it's really, really hard hitting and and in your face, for example, in um, where was it? And in, in, yeah, in Pale Rider itself. Um, is that important for you to balance things out on a record? I think so. I think that's something we thought about because uh, in on our last record, I think we had a lot of we had a lot of you know uh, slow slow intro into a heavier part into like a slower outro and and. Uh, I think we consciously thought about that this time around. We're like, well, let's not, we don't want every song to kind of like start and end with the same feel and kind of follow mm -hmm. this. Record. So, so yeah, I think that was, that was intentional to have, to have some songs that kind of start out mellow, but then have other songs that start out hard. Uh, yeah. Which is good. very well achieved. I mean, like 
when you listen to the songs separately, which I also sometimes do, and with this one I I intentionally did after my first listen, uh, they are, I don't want to say very diverse, mm -hmm. in a way they are, but what right. is very interesting, when you then again listen to the whole record in one go, it all makes sense. Right. And I'm I'm very sure that one of the most difficult things for you was to figure out a track list, right? Like which which way does it have to go for those eight tracks? I well, I don't think it was too difficult. Um and I, yeah, think, I feel like it came kind of easy this right. time. Mm -hmm. As you know, as 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 a band, we just kind of like, oh yeah, this is gonna be the start, this is gonna be the finish, and just kind of figured out. Just yeah, what what made sense and what felt right, obviously, yeah. and I think you get you get a sense for that while you're writing the music anyway. Like oh, this this would probably be a good transition in the middle kind of piece or whatever. So uh, it was pretty it's pretty easy to to put the order together. I I feel like it's interesting that you say that because I've heard from a lot of other bands when they say like track listing is one of the hardest things. It's very interesting. Oh. Um, You've spoken about this being some kind of soundtrack to a fictitious horror movie. Sure. Could we also then think of these more mellow tracks as like the calm before the final ending? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should see Wes like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so if if you imagine this to be... A, a soundtrack to a horror movie, who would you like to have for the main characters? Well, I mean, like, that's something that I have to ask. Well, so in, in my mind, the way I pictured it, like, so if you've seen the album cover with like the little, the uh, the moth on the cover, it, in my mind, there's always just like a guy, because we, we talked about making a, a music video, which which I don't know if we'll do or not, but like a, like almost like a guy with like that kind of like moth face and like a big robe, like in like, like a cabin in the woods kind of, kind of deal. And so yeah. like, so, and that guy, I guess I, I'd, I'd assume that'd be Akron, uh, would be the character. Uh, it's just some sort of... Yeah, but which actors would you like to play? Which, which actors would you like to have, yes, for that movie? That's a good question. I know. What's his name? <laughs> What's his name that did, uh, like, Bill Skarsgård, I guess, would be a cool Akron, the guy that did... You mean uh, the guy who played... Um, uh, it. Who played Pennywise in It, All right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I think Good choice. It'd be, it'd be cool. <laughs> I don't know who are the victims. <laughs> who are? Well, of course, one must be a young woman who then traps over some kind of root, right? Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course, yes. But it's interesting. It's interesting that uh, that you have been thinking about like doing a video so yeah and i could also imagine acheron being being a good song for for any kind of video um but question i mean like i, I how handy is it for you to have wes in the band as the as the owner of the studio and and also somebody who's worked with you before how handy is that oh it's it's great honestly because he obviously knows uh we recorded with him before obviously so he knows kind of like our our process a little bit and, mm -hmm. and then how we kind of operate and and uh you know he's not afraid to tell us like hey let's not do that <laughs> <Let's> just, <laughs> you know what i mean uh which which is also great obviously it's we're all happy to have any sort of input so uh it, it, yeah it's super awesome and then you know we didn't really do much of a pre-production last time uh but with west we had obviously the opportunity to do uh much more of that which i think was helpful so. So, so did you record all eight tracks in one go, or did it spread over time? We recorded them pretty much all the same. Pretty much, yeah. week and a half, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. That's quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It did real fast. Yeah, but it was helpful to have. Next that band coming in, you gotta. Go, yeah. go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to make money, right? <laughs> yeah. But but Wes, when looking at your website, I saw something that I have to ask you about. Yeah. Uh, you spoke about doing production for like post rock and, and, and metal and stuff, but you also mentioned outlaw country. Yeah. So I have to ask, <laughs> uh, like, which artists are you referring to, and which outlaw country artist would you like to produce? 
Uh, there's some really good local Salt Lake fans, like Lauren Walker Madison does a really good job of swinging lights. Or two of like kind of outlaw country bands I've recorded. Um, I really like like Vincent Neil Emerson, like kind of the Texas sort of stuff that's happening now. The Charlie Crockett. There's, there's some good new artists out there. Okay. I, I, try to be, I, I always try to buy new genres and constantly try to, I don't know, learn about new production, new songwriting styles. I'm always trying to. I don't know. Is, is that something where you say like okay that also in some ways influences my own writing and guitar playing um hard to say probably like like subconsciously probably mm -hmm. um you know when i'm working on a project i'm i don't know i feel like i just kind of you know have an idea I want to try to hone in on and and hopefully that idea can take me to different you know avenues to explore different things um but you know I'd say learning about different genres and different things definitely just helps being able to um, focus on something specific and have that kind of expand out to different things if that makes any sense yeah it does yeah do you do all three of you also think that you know this this diversity in what you're all listening to and stuff that that might also in some ways always change at least in tiny little bits always change the sound of your own band probably i mean i li i listen to post rock and stuff like that but i i think i i listen to a lot of old 90s and like 90s grunge and i still like the the like early 2000s like emo screamo stuff i think is cool which i think you can probably hear a little bit in like akron or some of those songs i think there's a little bit of that influence in there obviously apple apple seed cast is a, a big influence probably on all of us and, yeah definitely. yeah <laughs> which is also I'm... interestingly one of those bands which is somewhere right in the middle between emo and post rock yes i can see that yeah. um uh, so then, of course, the question must be, are there any direct influences on this new record where you say, like, okay, I've been listening to this and I wanted to do something like that or everything very self? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll kind of just, and there there wasn't any real particular, hey, let's sound like this or, or, mm -hmm. or it just kind of like came together. I think as we started writing songs, they kind of had this darker creepier vibe and so that's kind of where we went with the well let's like, kind of get like a dark horror horror film kind of vibe with the, the songs for this album so. are there then also any kind of particular horror soundtracks where you say like okay that is a really good one because i would have one in my mind but i would definitely all always pluck uh, i don't i don't think so i didn't think we thought of one in, in particular i think for me anyway i always like to I, i'm more like visual in my head than I am like sound in my head so I'm like oh what's what's gonna create this emotion or what's gonna what's gonna paint this picture mm -hmm. as opposed to hey let's sound like that <laughs> and the other two any any particular soundtrack fans I like soundtracks uh I, did, I can't think of any I horror know. soundtracks yeah. I mean obviously I like the Hans Zimmer stuff uh, you know Inception and and all that yeah. um but, you know, I, I guess I do like Danny Elfman. Yeah, like we Danny don't. We, I mean, we don't sound like Danny Elfman no. at all. <laughs> no. But I do, like, you know, like Edward Scissorhands and all his, all his uh, yeah. Simpsons. His... What's that? Simpsons. He does Simpsons. a lot for the Simpsons. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if anybody asked me, like, for a really, really well-made horror movie soundtrack, I would always say, listen to The Exorcist. Uh, huh? yeah. Very well done soundtrack. Yes. Um, because it always, and that's also something that I could see with your, with Acker and with a new record. Uh, I think horror soundtracks should be subtle, um, but at the same time also be capable of standing on their own. And I think that's what Acheron really well does. Um, if if you if you look forward, you know you've you've been mentioning touring with with Balta and. Um, and playing also, of course, you have already played post festival. If I remember, like, what was it, 22? 23? 23. twenty-three, twenty-three, something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. 
So what, what is next for you with this record? Tours, Europe, hopefully? Yeah, so I the the plan is Europe we're working on right now, and then potentially China at the end of the year next year. Uh we're not sure. Everything's still kind of in the works, but yeah. But yeah, the definitely the plan is Europe. We've been talking about that for a while. So, so. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, you also are are pressed on dunk in Europe, aren't you? Yes, correct. And isn't there also like a label in China that releases your records? Uh, New Noise did huh. the last one, yeah. So it's a very mono-ish uh, thing because they also have three labels, one in Europe, one in the States, and one and New Noise in, in China. Um, it's interesting because a lot of Europeans, and I think also a lot of Americans, forget that that is a huge market and that New Noise is a really big label over there. So um, shout out to the people over there in china um what also strikes me a few years ago more or less three years not not to the point but a little bit more than three years ago uh we have done an interview with uh your fellow utah countrymen with black flag and the nightmare fighters oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. we also talked a little bit about um about the salt lake scene and they they also mentioned you uh as your I think Dan even used the word predecessors. Um, oh. You're now closing in on 20 years of existence. How does that feel for you, David? And who's been That's crazy? So yeah, me and me and the other David started the band in 2005. Uh, yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. Uh, but obviously, I think some of the things that we're thinking about all that time is is there's a lot of we had a lot of transition with different mm -hmm. members, like people that just, it just didn't necessarily work out with. And then I think we had, after Adrian moved, we had like a break of a couple, maybe like a couple of years where we just didn't do anything. And and so for as long as we've been out, it, I've been a band, it's, we don't have a whole lot of music out, but but uh, we're trying to, trying to change that now in the recent years and see what happens. And, I think it's yeah. very, I think it's very difficult, you know, to, to start early on and then keep going. I mean, like we're not we're we're in a day and age where music will never pay your bills. So I think you know if a band could stick around for twenty years in any way or form, that's already an achievement. Yeah. Um, but if we talk about Salt Lake City and the Salt Lake City scene, uh, we've been talking with with Dan and the other fellows um, uh, beginning of twenty twenty one. Do you do you notice any change in the last couple of years in Salt Lake City and or the Utah scene in general? I don't know. I think probably Wes is more plugged into that than Yeah, Wes, then that's your question. Yeah. Um yeah, there, we have a lot of really good venues that have been around for a very long time. So we're very lucky in that regard. There's a lot of great places to play. Mm -hmm. Um there's always, you know, new young bands coming around that are really, really good. And um, it's always been a really good scene as far as everybody's been really kind together and happy to play shows and, you know, work with each other. So, yeah, pretty fortunate. So are there any, like, newer Salt Lake or Utah post bands that you would like to drop here? That is a good chance now. Well, so I don't know. They're they're not necessarily new, but Black Shape is mm -hmm. super cool. I think they're they're in Europe right now, actually, or they leave for Europe on Monday, uh, so they'll be they'll be touring over there. Um, there's a friend of mine, Matt Wiggum, who does a project called Death Stare, which is super cool. Um, but I think that's about all I know. That's kind of post mm -hmm. postish kind of music. And Wes, any more suggestions from your side? Uh, yeah, pretty much those two projects are kind of like the two other post brought things in Salt Lake that are, are super cool. I can't really think of any other off the top of my head right now. Yeah. yeah. As far as post, Robert yeah. Small scene, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I mean, Salt Lake City is a pretty small city, yeah. really, but and but I think that's kind of what makes it rad oh, is yeah, because yeah. it is small and, and the scene kind of like there's crossover between different mm -hmm. genres and 
yeah, all the different bands, the metal bands and punk bands and every sort of pretty much genre always play shows together. There's a lot of every local mm-hmm. show, pretty good crossover genre wise. And yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, fr- a friend of mine uh, a few a few months back said like it's interesting to see like the cities like Salt Lake and also cities like Houston or Minneapolis, uh, which have very small scenes, although they're of course not really small cities compared to Europe. Um, yeah. Um, one thing, last thing before we we talk, or two more things before we go into the final, um, yeah, dog wants attention, uh, before we go into the final uh, question round, um, you have always had a knack for really good artwork. And very often in, the sh- in like the shades of like, dark dark gray and interesting blues who always comes up with that uh so in in recent times uh, we have a we have an artist from venezuela that we like to use uh named enrique morales uh a lot of times though it's like a conversation with them like hey this is this is kind of the direction we're heading or or what we what we want to see and a lot of times it's artwork that he's already started that he's you know, uh, has on display and we're like, Hey, we really like that. Can we, can we do something off of that or whatever? But, but yeah, lately it's been, uh, uh Enrique, um, obviously the, the album cover prior, the Stella Morial album cover was Wilson from a thousand arms, mm-hmm. uh, or Leviticus is what his design company's called. But, uh, and then anything before that, I just kind of did myself, which is all kind of, kind of stupid, but, but, uh, it's all right. All our early artwork was just stuff I did on like a, a crappy uh, software. I don't know. Yeah, let's just call it DIY, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and last question. Uh, we've already mentioned and dropped it very, very often. Um, post recordings, the, the label that you are also working with in the States. Um, is there any way for you or in general that one could overestimate the importance of? Post recordings, post festival, for the American post rock scene, or do you say like they should get even more credit than they already get? Uh, I mean, that's that's tough. Obviously, obviously, with their festival, I think the festival's done a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, they, they I think they deserve, particularly with the festival, a huge amount of credit. And then uh, obviously they they've had bands on the label that other people, myself included, wouldn't have heard of like uh, Lanin and and uh, gosh I can't even think of any of anyone on the label right now. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, you know, obviously I think post recordings and post festival had have had a huge impact. Particularly this year's festival was was they they just continued to grow and grow and grow. And this was a this one, this year's was a good one. So. Yeah, and also seeing like who they got to play i mean like page 99 wow. oh, like, that's a, that's a wet dream come true i would <laughs> say at least for me i haven't seen them. um yeah and i also think that um yeah they, i think they've done a lot of good stuff over years and of course um, that that thing that they're doing which is similar to dunk in in belgium like having right. a festival having a label i think that is something that uh, the american post rock scene in some way needs not to say that a thousand arms, for example, is doing a bad job, or also temporary residents who are also doing a great job, but they don't have that festival behind them, and that's I think something that that post is doing really, really well. So, lady, gentlemen, the last thing in every veil of sound interview is the infamous quick fire round, and everybody has to go through it. You will get two alternatives: something like Coca Cola versus Pepsi. California versus Texas, uh, Kamala Harris versus an idiot. <laughs> right, right. You have to choose uh, okay, okay. and give okay. a short explanation if possible for your choice. Um, let's start off with something hmm, somewhat simple. Cursive versus bright eyes. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I would go cursive. I'd go with cursive. I would probably go cursive as well. Uh, I do like any bright particular eyes. reason. Oh, the cello is so cool. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. that's different. Mm. 
That's also is a very good uh, way uh, to lead over to the next question. Saprosa versus Eagle Twin. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's put it like that. Which band would you rather listen to right now? Oh, it's man. not my mood, but I always Eagle Twin is always so I know, much fun. That's, I was going to yeah. say Eagle Heavy Twin, and too. And yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like everything that Gentry does is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was thinking of giving you Iceburn versus Eagle Twin, but then again, I thought, oh, that's <laughs> really hard. <laughs> That'd be hard one. <laughs> as much as I love Eagle Twin, but there are only few bands that could beat Iceburn for me, so that would be an easy one for me. Um, Russian Circles versus Pelican. For me, it's probably Russian Circles. I think. Yeah, I Russian, Russian Circles, circles yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's the way that I mean, like with either choice, you can't go wrong, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're all good. Yeah. Although I'm very sure that the other David would probably say Pelican because when it comes to drumming, I can see that. That's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Although, of course, also the drummer in Russian circles is a beast, of course. Um, mono versus the ocean. Oh, it's mono for me. Yeah, yeah mono. I think it when they're. I mean, I don't know. This, they're one of the earlier post rock bands that I discovered, obviously. Uh, so I don't know. And then I, I've, I've never seen the ocean, but I saw, I've seen Mono a few times, and they're just, just, just amazing. So. If, if anybody wants to find out a little bit more about a recording of a last Mono record, visit our archive. We had an interview, one of the rare interviews with Taka a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. um, this will destroy you versus if these trees could talk. So, uh, yeah, for for me, it's if these trees could talk. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like I like this will destroy you, particularly like the cup the the first two records. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for me, for me, it's this will destroy you. It's it's a little more or if these if trees, these trees could talk. Sorry, for me, it's if these trees could talk. I think. It's a little more. It's a little more drivey and a little more, a little more up my alley. I think. Adrian, I'm Wesley, what would be your choice? I was gonna say this yeah. will destroy yeah. for uh, me too. So I'm the I'm the outsider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody's got to be the outsider once in a while. <laughs> um, I got two more. Um, let's start. We've been talking about Black Flag and the Nightmare Fighters. Uh, so I, I took this as a starting point for two hardcore bands, which could be united in that band name. Black Flag versus American Nightmare. I don't know American Nightmare. I haven't li listened to American Nightmare for a long time. I know, time. that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> if, you, if you don't know American Nightmare, you might know the follow-up band, Give Up the Ghost. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So... <laughs> I don't know that I have an answer for that one. Yeah. Um, I'd probably do American Nightmare. I'm not super familiar. I'm not super yeah, familiar. That's not that one I'm only familiar because my husband. Uh, so I okay, hear okay. it more. <laughs> Good husband. Good yeah. Husband. <laughs> and tricky one to end with. And it's a little cheeky one. Which place would you rather visit right now? Indianapolis, Indiana. Or Bozeman, Montana. Oh. And the nerds among us will know what yeah. I'm hinting at. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, for vacation. Well, we were just in Indianapolis last year for, yeah. for Post Fest. But it'd be nice to go. I haven't I haven't been out to uh at the A Thousand Arms uh warehouse in, in Bozeman. I'd like to go to Bozeman, I think. Yeah, Bozeman's my Bozeman. choice. Yeah, Bozeman. Yeah. Yeah interesting it's uh would also be my choice because nothing against indianapolis but i would like to see uh wilson do his screen printing stuff oh, yeah. Yeah. in real life once in a while <laughs> so adrian wesley david thanks for all your time thanks for the cool detailed answers into the new record and um everybody out there uh when you see this the new record will already be out for a few weeks, Acheron. 
listen to it, enjoy it, best with headphones on and, you know, no kids to disturb, no dog to feed, nothing else. Uh, no <laughs> stupid neighbors. <laughs> um, and if you like what we do here at the Vale of Sound, maybe give us a subscription here on our channel, on our socials. Um, or if you want to do a little bit more, I've seen that a few people are now donating for YouTube. You can do this. Or, of course, you can also go to our Patreon and leave a little bit there on a monthly basis. Now, for the three of you, anyone, final last words. Uh, <laughs> what are you gonna say, Wes? Um, uh, I don't know, man. I hope, hopefully, uh, you, you know everybody checks out the new record and enjoys it. We had a fun time making it, and yeah, we were really stoked on what we came up with. We're really proud of it. So mm -hmm. hopefully, other people enjoy it. Hopefully, and then hopefully, <laughs> most important things that one that yeah. one is proud of his own work or her own work for sure. So, yeah. The three of you, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, hope to see you on European stages sooner than later. Yes, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Thank Thanks for having us. So Thank you. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Bye.